can we as a collective now admit that weight loss is not primarily about health and it's primarily about appearance? Like, let's zoom out and think of it on a social, cultural level. So many of the videos that go viral online, all the posts, just general commentary between people IRL, it's all very appearance-based. It's like, oh my god, do I look thinner? My face is less chubby. Can I do agree though, there is a lot of mm, physical motivation involved when it comes to losing weight. A lot of people do approach weight loss with the idea of I'm going to become more I'm going to become physically more appealing over time, which in and of itself is not a bad thing because the downward consequences of becoming better looking through the process of losing weight are literally becoming healthier. So if you think going to the gym, if you think like I'm going to start on this, this calorie deficit and I'm going to get so much better looking, I'm going to have a jawline, you can see my rib cage, you can see my muscles growing, you can see the triceps, the buys, whatever you want to do, right? If that is what you want to do, that's okay as long as like the the end game of that is you become healthier because most people that are starting off from the baseline of obesity they honestly speaking like it's already their destiny they're going down a road of literally just like a lifetime a lifetime of disgusting illnesses uh your lifetime your lifespan in general is going to be expedited because having the weight on yourself for as long as these people do is not a good thing. I mean, we're, we're talking about some of these people have been having this weight on them for like 10, 20 years, which is realistically like cutting off like a good 10 years of your life or more of that of even if you don't, even if you do, do live a long period of time, just simply having the weight on your body is going to negatively affect you as you get older and older and older. Like the, the, the rubber bandness of your body, the ability for it to like flex back into shape or is going to be severely diminished as time goes on. So, if you wanted to lose weight and then, you know, as a byproduct of that, become healthier, yeah, I mean, you look good while doing it. What's the problem with that? By the way, I'm sorry if I look weird right now. Uh, it's not, I wasn't sweating profusely. It's raining out currently and I had to go outside and mail a whole bunch of stuff. So that's why. Um, but you know what? As a byproduct of that, you make me real wet. Wetter than an African child during typhoon season. Look how wet I am. Oh, hubba hubba. See less of my double chin, yada, yada, yada. So many things that are appearances. Which is fine. Like if you want to lose weight for that reason. And the important thing is you're doing it and now you're becoming healthier as a byproduct. People saying, I don't care about being healthy. I don't give a fuck if Ozempic's going to fuck me up. I just want to be thin. Half a million <laughs> likes, like fucking 10,000. Call them out, dude. Show the video of them doing that. I want to see it. I want to see the video of them going, I'm on Ozempic and it's going to literally kill me, but I don't give a fuck because I look good. Does that actually happen? If it does, I'm sure it does. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's done that's doing that for that particular reason. A lot of people have like really, really bad mentalities about life. Like, do you know how many, you know how many times I've heard somebody say, oh, I'm not going to live till 30 anyway, so why does it matter? I might as well do heroin. I might as well suck a man. I might as well do things that are just ridiculous because I don't plan on living past 30. But you know what always happens? It always happens like this. They live past 30. And then they realize, oh, wait a minute. I've fucked up for so long. I saved no money. I don't have family. I have nothing. I might as well keep going and see what else I can do in my life, right? And people keep going. But you fucked up like a good 10, 20 years of your life with this idea that you're never going to make it past 30 or 40, which is really, really terrible. And most of the time, you do make it past 30 and 40. And the same thing could be said for these fat people. Like, they don't see the traumas that they're putting themselves under day to day to day to day because it's not very obvious. It's actually quite ambiguous for a lot of these people because, like, here's the thing. Even though these people are going to be suffering from joint pains and shoulder problems and, and, you know, hip problems and all this other stuff and diabetes, high blood pressure, they may not be seeing the consequences of that right now because they're young they're still relatively young even though splotch maker looks like she's in her mid 40s she's actually like in her 20s i believe like i believe mid to late 20s so <laughs> even though you're not seeing the problems right now oh they are coming a hundred percent they're coming you cannot doubt it the longer you go the more problems you're gonna have right even i I used to be able to do this all day and crack this knuckle. Now I can't anymore. I know that sounds like a little crazy of a thing. Like, Dave, you're really comparing not being able to crack a knuckle to no longer being able to walk accurately anymore. I know. But it's the point I'm making is like you don't know these things are going to be issues until they're issues. You know what I'm saying? So it's really tough. But the consequences of this are literally life changing. Comments. It's like we really have to stop pretending. Okay.
we cannot ignore the reality that being smaller comes with so much social privilege. Yeah, which is a good thing, by the way. Like, if you lose weight, not only are you becoming better looking for the people around you and yourself, you can look in the mirror and admire the jawline. You can admire the good, beautiful forehead. You can admire the nice elbow without that extra over on top of it. You have all these beautiful parts of your body that are literally being coated in layers and layers and layers and layers of fat, and now you can... You can visualize them. You can see them. They've been uncovered like some kind of treasure that Jack Sparrow was digging up. Your body is a treasure. It's just being coated by layers and layers of sand. And as a byproduct of that, you're becoming more socially accepted because most people don't want to look at fat people because fat people are literally dying. So it's kind of morbid to look upon somebody that's purposefully dying and doing nothing about it. So there's that. And then also, you're becoming healthier. Mm, your body's operating the way that it should be. Beautiful! and so many social benefits. Because being fat is socially seen as not just unhealthy, take that out of it. No, 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 let's not take that out of it. Let's let's make sure that's like the biggest part. As lazy, it is. selfish. Most of the time, laziness comes from the, 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 the fact of you are so fat, this is negatively affecting you and you're doing nothing about it. That's laziness. And then selfish in the sense of like, you have you, not only do you have to worry about yourself because a lot of people fail to realize this, but you are also even though you don't want to look even though you don't want to look at it like this, you have friends, you have family, you maybe have sons, daughters, whatever it may be. Those people are relying on you, right? Especially if you have kids, maybe family members that are getting elderly, whatever. Those people are relying on you to a certain degree or another to sit there and think I don't need to take care of myself because it's my life is incredibly selfish because I know and you know there are going to be times in your life where you need to step up and do something that you don't want to do but you know you have to do it otherwise it never gets done and sometimes that's going to benefit somebody else and sometimes it's going to benefit you regardless there are people around you that need you to be healthy and what you're doing instead of doing that is just shitting on yourself perpetually you're just like sitting on your back and there's a fountain of shit flying up out of your butt cheeks and it's just you. That's what you're doing when you're obese or fat. It's just like you're you're literally being selfish. You're not taking into account how many other people need you in your life, right? How many people? Like, don't really sit down and think about this because a lot of people don't realize how many people rely on them day to day to day to day. And they need you to be there consistently. Now, don't get me wrong. There are going to be moments in your life where things are going to happen to you and those are out of your control and maybe they're not in your control, right? But things happen, right? That's okay. But can you imagine doing that purposefully, having the audacity to sit there and say it's my life while your parents are sitting there like, whoa, I'm like 95 years old, I can't walk anymore, I need help getting to the bank. Or you have a kid that can literally not brush his teeth without you telling him, but you can't get out of bed to tell him. There are plenty of things in your life that you're going to have to do, and you're just you're just looking at it as a, in a selfish perspective. So 100%, it is selfish. Unmotivated, yep. unintelligent. I don't know. Mm, unintelligent. I know that for a fact, the more fat you get on your body, your hormones will be impeded to such a degree that maybe it does have some like cognitive decline to a certain degree. I don't know. It's bad, ugly. Yeah. That is a non negligible reality, and we need to stop acting like all the hate that fat people get, people in bigger bodies get is solely because we want them to be healthy. It's like the number one reason, the number one reason, okay? Being healthy means, okay, there's literally nobody involved that wouldn't benefit from you being healthy. The government wants you to be healthy so you can work for longer amounts of time and you can contribute more money to taxes. Your family wants you to live longer and healthier so that way you can help them with their things and they can help you with that and probably because they love you and things such and so forth and that's really important, right? Can you imagine having a loving family as a crazy idea? But anyway, there are plenty of reasons for you to become healthy and then if the byproduct of that is you're more socially accepted and people think that you're hot, I don't see the problem, dude. It kind of sounds like a win, 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 win to me. And the only reason we don't want to look like them, people don't want to look like me, is because of health. It, it, there's other reasons too, obviously. I don't want to be gutted up. I don't want my face to be looking like a teapot. I don't want to sit there and not know where my rib cage is. And if I was in a position where I was a heavy set woman, I don't even know if the guy is actually infiltrating my vagina rather than my gut folds because I don't know, maybe just lose sensation there or something like that. I don't want to have the only position we can do be back shots because it's physically impossible for me to bend over in an appropriate way or like lay down and flip some stuff up have to have to hire like crane crews to like lift up my stomach folds um not be able to see my penis i mean there are plenty of reasons not to be fat really and then also that one of the bigger reasons is if you fall down you just like give up what if you just like fall down 
and you just can't get up anymore and you have to ask somebody else. Now, don't get me wrong. If you're older, this happens, right? Fine. But can you imagine being like 24, 25, falling down and not being able to get up? That's tough. That's real tough. There's literally no benefit to it. Body shaming is so casual. They're often cloaked in jokes, so it's harder to call out. You know what I love about Splotchmaker? It's almost kind of like she has two separate versions of her speech pattern, right? She has her, like, really confident way of speaking here. And then she has this, like, oh, body. Oh, it's just so terrible. How do we have so much body? bullying in our society what are you doing why do you why do you, when you're like victimizing yourself when you're acting like this why do you have to go to this like little girl voice say it with your whole chest say it with your whole chest why are you talking like that it's so uncanny to me like me like this she's it's so confident here but when she starts this next clip oh there's so much bullying it's because of health body shaming is so casual they're often cloaked in jokes, so it's harder to call out. Yeah, they, they really don't like the fat jokes, man. It's crazy, bro. I get it. Like, at one point in time, listen, if you known anybody, I was just thinking about this recently, right? It's going to sound kind of crazy, but if you knew anybody from back in 2010 or 2011 that used to play Call of Duty, um, zombies, ask them what they would call it when they trained up zombies, okay? Times are different. The, you know, what jokes were back then compared to what jokes are now is very very different and i think it's very very interesting when people come on the internet and they go these jokes are unbelievable i can't believe you would say such atrocities to fat people dude get over yourself how many jokes we got to take out of the english language because you guys are offended at some point we're literally gonna have to go oh is that offensive to you i'm sorry do you mind if i say anything at all it might be offensive regardless of what i say like that's really the direction we're going under right now for example i've seen so many videos recently go really viral on this app where people are talking about having big backs yeah big back bitches dude that's that shit that samira got right that song big back beats right that's that shit um and you know what dude if you looking like airsoft fatty airsoft fatty got that weird back he got a lot of back actually i think a lot of his weight is stored in the the, the top part of his back almost i don't know how exactly it works but i think it's probably preferable to have the hunchback of notre dame big ass back compared to the big ass belly at least it's a little bit more ambiguous like you can't really see it not many people really care about the back in general unless you're talking about butt cheeks so i don't even i need i get the idea like the context of the joke which is that they're making fun of you based off of weights so that's already not a good thing but if i'm be honest with you for a second calling somebody big backed that's really light that's super light matter of fact and they're like stuffing their back and their stomach just their entire torso with pillows and then like hunch walking over to get some food or yeah. talking about food this is at best just body shaming and at worst disordered yeah so what dude listen we body shame a lot i it, it may or may not be good depending on what you're talking about and what do you mean disordered like the way you guys eat like what do you mean disordered can we talk about that for a second dude i'm sorry that jokes that you find uh unappealing are unappealing to you but to other people they're funny there's a reason why they get the reception that they do i don't know what to tell you bro you're literally nitpicking at this point our culture already really moralizes food what do you mean our culture is she from america right or at least Western designed countries, our culture is not favorable to fat people in what direction? We literally incentivize it. Like we have, an, if we're talking about American culture for a second, you, dude, we literally have entire industries based off of people becoming obese, okay? Like that's crazy to say, but that's a thing. You go over to like any other country, let's say you go over to like Korea. Do you think that you'll have as much success as you do right now talking about the things that you do over there in Korea or like Japan or like India or like any of these Asian countries? Fuck no, dude, you'd be done. They would like look at you and they start laughing at you with their mustache and body size and we don't need any more jokes or anything normalizing that behavior what are you talking about man splotchmaker is so touch and go on a lot of this shit because she complains about this stuff consistently like oh fat phobia oh i can't buy two blaine tickets it's fat phobic whatever 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 and then like she says like oh yeah you should say whatever you want to say and then she says things like this where it's like oh yeah no you shouldn't say what you want to say because it's offensive to man like it's it's never ending with these people because like it's too much hypocrisy because what they're saying right now could be i know that's not how you pronounce the word hypocrisy i don't know whatever but what i what i often get from these people is like do what i say not what i do because these people by the way dude splotch maker with this like 
this sad face that she's got going on that fucking I don't know man what the fuck is she doing with this voice dude I literally just heard your grown woman voice 20 seconds ago in the other video why are you putting on this little girl voice to try to make it more sympathetic like your words have more value say it with your whole chest man the fuck up dude I hate when people do that shit it's not putting on this false like idea of the way you talk okay anyway so you don't want people to make jokes, but you're totally okay with making videos, talking about how people are oppressed. You're totally okay with claiming that fat people are, are are super, super ridiculously oppressed. Even in this other video where you're literally talking about, you know, oh, yeah, you don't want to look like me, whatever. There's nothing wrong with being fat. So you can say whatever you want to say, but we can't say what we want to say. And to me, that's an issue, bro. You can't have it both ways. How do you know that what you're saying isn't more offensive or less offensive compared to another person? Our culture already really moralizes food and body size, and we don't need any more jokes or anything normalizing Says that behavior. Who? This makes people not want to eat. This makes people not want to listen to their bodies. Y you're going too far. What do you mean by listen to their bodies, bro? You know how many times I was out in public and I was like, I probably need to beat off right now. Like, I pro my shit is getting bricked up. Uh, I probably need to just stroke this shit out real quick. But you know what I did? I sat down and I decided that it wasn't socially acceptable to beat off in a church. So I did. And there are many occasions where your body will tell you to do something. And that's not always the practical thing to do because it doesn't make sense to do that since you have a brain and you can reason with the, your own thoughts. So there's that. And then also, <laughs> well, I got to go back. Nor okay. Normalizing, Normalizing that, behavior. that behavior. This makes people not. Yeah. Makes people not want to eat, dude. What are you talking about? There are plenty of times in our life where things happen and people say stuff that's going to be uncomfortable. And sometimes if you know it doesn't apply to you or you know you're doing the right thing, why are you even looking at it in the sense of like, this is going to make me not eat? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I get it. Certain people, this will apply to more than others. But even still, dude, get the fuck over. You're on the internet. Why are you acting like this? Want to eat. This makes people not want to listen to their bodies. This makes people really ashamed and really self-conscious. And Duh. what? But the dude, what the fuck do you want us to do? Because you could say this literally about anything in life. Oh yeah, this guy. I was at the. I was at like the red light and I looked over and there was a guy listening to music while he was driving. And I can't do that because I am very, very not secure in the fact if I listen to music, I might crash the car. It's a higher risk of doing that. And it's really offensive that he can he can listen to the radio. And he can also drive simultaneously. So we're going to need to stop that altogether because that's really offensive. It's going to stop me from driving. It's going to make me feel really bad. Like how far do we go, Swatchmaker? Because what you're saying right now is literally people should stop making jokes about fat people. Because if you make jokes about fat people, that may or may not make a fat person upset about that. I don't give a fuck. That's the entire purpose of a joke. There are going to be people that are going to be upset. So what? It's a joke. It fuels eating disorders. But then myself and others are the weird ones for calling it out. You're weird because you're calling out things that are ridiculous. Instead, you should be calling out things that actually make sense. Because it was cloaked in a joke. Yeah. If you cloak things in humor, it has to be innocent. Not all the time, but usually if there's like... It depends on the context of the situation. Some jokes never, some jokes just don't hit. Some jokes are better than others, right? You know it, I know it. Some jokes are innocent and some jokes are not innocent. But I'm not here to police every single fat joke because you think that they're objectively bad. That's terrible. You just can't take a joke. Yeah, you can't. Obviously, Swatchmaker can't take a joke, but she could take all that all those fucking pizzas and cheesecakes in a mouth, obviously. This is what people mean when they say, call out body shaming, call out fat phobia, call out all these things as you see it. Sometimes they're not as obvious. Sometimes they're casual and funny. And I, I just don't want to be a friend to somebody that if I make a joke and I'm like, damn, that bitch big as fuck. Damn, but you land well, big hippo bitch, right? And then somebody goes, that's really insensitive. That's really insensitive that you would say that. Okay, well, that's fine, but I don't want to be your friend anymore because you're too sensitive or you're actually just trying to start a problem with me for no reason, given the fact that I know you make jokes in the same caliber, probably about different things that you don't find offensive. And then that's completely fine. But when I do it about somebody that I think is like, I don't know, like if I want to make a fat joke, I don't know why you can do it about a particular group. Like, what if you had a gay joke? Like, what if you were gay and you were like, oh my God, that dude is so gay. I bet he can't even take like nine inches like I can. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm so gay. And then you go, yeah, yeah, but look at that. Look at that fat bitch over there. I bet she can hog dog like 50 cheesecakes in it. <gasps> oh my God, Harold, what are you doing? That's offensive. Dude, you just, you just totally told me that this guy can't even stroke off more than nine inches. And you thought that was a funny joke. I thought it was a funny joke too. But now I can't talk about a woman body slamming 14 cheesecakes. It's the same thing. 
and quirky and relatable, but that doesn't nullify that they play into and create the systems that we live in. Damn, I, you know, having this oppression on the brain so so consistency so consistently has to weigh you down more than the obesity on uh, on the Earth of the gravity, right? That's it. To be honest, like thinking about how oppressed you are as consistently as Splotchmaker does. It's got to be agonizing, right? Just to live your life day by day and consistently be thinking about all the times and all the places that you've been oppressed and how you are oppressed today and how people today are oppressing you and maybe they're not even doing anything to oppress you, but you got to somehow come up with a reason why they're oppressing you. It's got to be agonizing to think about that shit so consistently. It is actually okay and really good to be more critical about the media you consume. Keep in mind, Splotchmaker has literally come out and said that she has put... She puts herself in a bracket to where she like unfollows and blocks and completely like obliterates anybody that doesn't agree with what she agrees with. And she's caught herself in like a vacuum of fat acceptance. So when she says that, understand that she's put herself in a scenario where she's literally incapable of listening to anything other than the ideologies that she has surrounded herself with. It has impacts and you don't have to be a wet blanket. It doesn't have to be labeled any certain way. Inclusivity doesn't have to be bad. You can make jokes. It's not about being inclu- if, if you were really serious about being inclusive, you should be okay with somebody making jokes. There's no way to get over heights if you're never going to address the problem. There's no way you're going to get over, I don't know, your fear of spiders if you don't confront the spiders. You're just going to be consistently scared of the thing that you don't know anything about because you can't, you can't confront the problem. So if you're actually offended by somebody saying a joke about fat people, big back bitches or whatever the fuck then you should probably confront those things, challenge those beliefs, you know, understand why they're making those jokes. I don't know, have a conversation with somebody instead of just making a video about how you're so oppressed because I'm, somebody said big back. That's crazy. Don't shame food and eating and already marginalized bodies. I don't even think she believes that. Like, I, I honestly don't believe she believes that because there are probably some foods in Splotchmaker's life that she definitely marginalizes, foods that she doesn't like, that she's gonna completely disincentivize, that she doesn't think are very valuable at all. In the same way that I don't think that, for instance, donuts are very valuable in comparison to other foods, right? There are times and places for these things, but I don't even, like, when these people say these particular types of words, I don't even think they believe them. The thing is, I don't care if I'm actually delusional. I... What a way to start a fucking video, bro. <laughs> God damn. Bodies. The thing is, I don't care if I'm actually delusional. I spent my entire childhood hating myself, my entire adolescence hating myself. I spent my entire life, basically, um, not being okay in my body and thinking that I, there was something wrong with me because I was fat. And There is something wrong if you're fat. That's, a, that's an objective truth. And in, in more ways than just being unhealthy, like being unattractive, not getting the reception that you think that you deserve or whatever the hell, it, whatever. The point I'm making is there is most definitely something wrong with being fat. But go ahead. Maybe it's not something you should hear when you're a child because it's like, why are you even telling a kid that there's something wrong with their bodies? They don't even really understand what that is. It's probably better to actually execute or have action rather than tell the kid. I don't even think it's a, it, it's probably never okay to tell the kid. Um, not being okay in my body and thinking that I, there was something wrong with me because I was fat. And now I literally, I'm barefaced minus this gloss. And I genuinely look at the mirror and I'm like, it's- <gasps> Ah, uh, what the fuck is that? No, face stop. minus his gloss. And I genuinely look at the mirror and I'm like, this is, I'm so beautiful. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> Great. I mean, it's awesome to find value within yourself. It's totally okay to look in the mirror and be like, wow, wow, dude, I look really good today. Look at those fucking biceps, right? But, but okay, Let, I'm, I'm going to hear her out. Genuinely look at the mirror and I'm like, this is, I'm so beautiful. Like, what do you mean? I am just this, I'm just, I'm so beautiful. I am sunburned. I haven't showered in two days and I'm looking at myself and I'm like, wow, I am so beautiful. And I, I'm sure, I, okay. Is that the reason though? Because you're sunburned and you haven't showered in two days. It's great to find beauty within your own body, but that shouldn't prohibit you from making changes that are completely necessary. Like having this weight on your body and then sitting there going like, oh, you know, I'm so beautiful already. Like, what do I do? What do I need to do? Like, I'm already beautiful. That's going to literally encourage you to do nothing. So I would always err on the side of I am beautiful, 
But what can I do to be accentuate that? What can I do to make this more beautiful? What can I do? Can I lose weight? Probably. Can I gain more muscle? Probably. There are plenty of things that you can do to improve your circumstance. I'm not saying you're not beautiful, but at least come from it from an understanding point of like, you can still improve. I'm going to allow myself to feel that way. And I don't. It's crazy that she's saying this within the realm of like, oh yeah, uh, I, I don't care that I'm delusional. She's actually admitting that even though she thinks these things, she knows to some degree that they're not real. Like she's actually full on believing right now, telling you too, that what she believes not only is not centered in reality, but she has convinced herself that it is her reality while being, I guess, in a like she's actually being self-aware about it, which is actually super concerning. Really care if it's true or delusion because I got a good pair of titties. I got I, you know what, dude? I'm, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I'm, gonna, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this, dude. I'm sick of it. I have friends that are 300 to 400 pounds, okay? Big men, big men, full testicled men. And they have some big titties too. So do I high five them? Like, hey, good job, bro. Good job on having those double D man titties, bro. No. No, because if you're fat and you have big boobs, that's an obvious thing. That's an obvious statement. That's like somebody saying, I have a car with wheels. I know you do. Otherwise, it would be like a boat or something. It's obvious. If you're fat and you have big boobs, I don't care. That means nothing to me. If you were fat and you didn't have big boobs, I would be kind of a little bit creeped out. Like, why did that happen? You know why you have those things? Because when you gain weight... Most of the time, the weight is going to go to other places that you probably don't want it to go to. Sometimes it does, and it will go to the boob area. I knew a girl that was like 200 and some pounds, and she had H cups, H cup boobs, and she lost all the weight. And now she's down to a D, okay? She went down to a D. You know why? Because when she lost the weight, she lost, you don't just lose weight in the areas that you want to lose weight in. So maybe you lose weight in your hips, maybe you lose weight in your gut, but you also lose weight in your butt, and you also lose weight in your boobs. And this goes for men and women. So if you're sitting there going, I have big boobs, and my boobs are really, really cool, I don't care. That don't mean shit. Nobody even looks at them as like anything that's quantity over quality. But anyway. Hair. If it's true, slay queen edges, you know, like if you think that you do, that's up to you. But obviously most people are not or going delusion to delusion because I got a good pair of titties. It's such a crazy thing to even say, like my buying point is big titties because I'm a big because I'm a fat girl. I got a nice face. I got mm, I mean, I mean, it, I don't know. Um, are you sure? Are you sure about that? What you mean by good face? You kind of got a little bit of something. I'm seeing some cheekbones, I guess. But that's really it. Like, you don't really got much else, dude. Where the neck at? Where the chin? All right, man. Whatever you say, dude. If you, I mean, you just said you're delusional. So, I mean, hey. If it's true or delusion, because I got a good pair of titties. I got a nice face. I got good lips. I got beautiful hair. Like, I have good style. I, I don't know about that one. That's kind of crazy, bro. I saw this woman dress, dude. She dresses like she just got off, like, My Chemical Romance. I'm allowing myself to feel good and comfortable and confident because I spent so many years not feeling that way. And now I'm gonna make up for it, you know? <laughs> by deluding yourself, by literally coming out and be like, I should be in like an insane asylum, but guess what, I'm not. I'm on the streets and I'm saying crazy shit like my boobs are great and my face card is great. I'm gonna make up for all of the time that I didn't like myself by being so utterly obsessed with myself, it makes people angry. I don't care that you're obsessed with yourself. I mean, it's great. You're literally, you literally just told us that you're delusional. So, I mean, to be honest, if you're under that assumption that you're delusional and you understand that you're delusional, like, I mean, I don't even understand how you can even do that, dude. Like the, you're literally like the self-reflection is crazy. That's fine. I don't care that you think you're beautiful, but what tends to happen is that you could think one day, one, one way, but the majority of the society, the majority of the public probably don't think that same way. But if that, if that's what gets you to sleep at night, go ahead. That is my goal. And nobody can tell me shit. You can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. And again, these people are literally t saying the quiet part out loud. They don't want to be wrong. So what they're doing in order to continuously be right is put themselves in yes queen arenas where all they all they hear back and forth is yes queen yes you look so cute yeah oh you you think you're fat no queen you you yeah, i mean you are fat but you're also like oh my god so gorgeous so beautiful should you lose no queen no queen slay no uh never lose weight losing weight is a sin that's what you're hearing and she's saying that she's saying that straight up like oh you can't tell me anything aka i don't care what you say because i'm gonna block you people angry 
That is my goal. And nobody can tell me shit. Sorry. Sorry. Please let me tell you about the comment that I can get which makes my blood boil the most. Because I got one this morning and I need to vent. So this comment will be on one of my videos of like plus size fashion or body positivity or just confidence. And it'll be something like, I am fat and I know this is unhealthy. True. Or I am fat and I know I need to change my ways and then go into- So you don't like that because they're telling the truth and they're saying it on a post with somebody that's obviously obese that hasn't lost weight that continues to get gain weight and does nothing about it? Okay. Criticize the content of the video. And there might be something stupid like, I don't know, just dressing for my body or maybe dress- Yeah, but like you have to at least understand that when you do certain things, just because you think there isn't like a way to connect those things, that's obviously not the case. Like if you're showing your body off and one of the prom one of the primary things about your body that people could see is your obesity, then yeah, obviously that's gonna be like, you know, first impressions matter. You know what I'm talking about? Like if you show up to a job interview and you look like CJ from San Andreas, you're probably not gonna get the, you're probably not gonna get the job because that dude's identifying things about you that probably are not presentable for this particular job interview. In the same way that if you make videos, fashion videos, you know, fit check, fit check video, check it out, guys, fit check. I'm wearing sweatpants today, and guess what else? I'm wearing a hat again. Oh my god, fit check. If you're doing fit checks in your body, which obviously that's like the primary thing, it's settled on your body, the clothes are settled on your body, then obviously people are gonna talk about your body. I mean, that should not be like a, I don't even know why they talked about this, it has nothing to do with the video. I guess, I fucking guess, but what I'm actually hearing is like, you're selling a Lamborghini and the color of the car is like fucking diarrhea brown and the person comes over like, um, so like, tell me about the color and you go, why is the color even relevant? Why would you fucking look at the car? Forget about the color. The color is relevant. Dressing the way that's deemed unflattering, you know, something like that. And they feel the need to tell me that. And the reason why this makes my blood boil the most team. Cause you know, there's truth behind it. Just keep it a buck. Just keep it a buck, dude. You know, there's truth behind it. And you know that that shit's hurting you because if you have to acknowledge the truth, that shit like completely destroys your ideology. Is that first part, the I am fat. Yeah. And then go on to explain. Because it's an attempt <laughs> to validate what they're about to say. It's yeah, because they, yeah, what they're saying is like they're giving what their sentence is credence. They're giving your sentence is value. They're preloading what they're about to say. They're basically saying like, I know what I'm talking about because I am a part of this organization. You understand? So naturally that's going to add a little bit more value to what they're saying right if i was like i don't know if i was a doctor right or i was just a random guy in the street and i saw a dude with a lump on his neck and i'm like hey bro that don't look too healthy that actually might be some cancer that dude's gonna look at me like dude shut the fuck up bro you don't know what you're talking about but if a doctor came out and he had like a testoscope or whatever that thing was called and he's like hmm sir yes i think that you have a cancerous tumor on the side i'm a doctor and then that guy's gonna go oh maybe i do you know why because depending on the situation and where you're at, some people do have a little bit more value depending on what they're saying compared to other people. So quite naturally, if somebody is fat and they're approaching the situation with, I am fat, so I, I'm gonna talk on this because I have the expertise. Yeah, that makes sense, dude, obviously. It's an attempt to validate what they're about to say as gospel, as truth. And it's- You, you do that too, though. You do that too. Don't act like you don't do that. You have literally entire videos on your, on your TikTok dedicated to I'm fat I know what I'm talking about because I'm in the fat acceptance community so I'm fat I've been living in this life I've been I've been putting up with the traumas I've been putting up with the fat phobia it's the same shit insidious and it's so you're insidious too you're literally saying that you do the same shit kind you just don't like it because they're saying something you don't agree with man that's fucked up bro get the fuck out of here bro how many times do I have to read through these people ironic <laughs> and it's insidious and it's kind of ironic <laughs> when we see someone outside of a group of people uh attack a group of people we it can come across as bullying for example if a man criticizes a woman it can come across as misogynistic right sure but it just depends on what you're saying like if you're gonna scream misogynistic because a guy said i don't know if a girl asked him hey do you think my you think my nails are good and he said ah no nah, i don't really like nails and you scream misogynistic then you're dumb probably you probably have some mental deficiency somewhere so it just really depends on what they're saying and how they're saying it and the context in which they're saying it but if someone within the group criticizes the group 
it has a lot more social power and weight, pun intended, behind it. So, for example, if a man criticizes a woman in the workplace as being catty, that can come across as misogynistic. Yeah. But if a woman, and I have met these women, goes in the workplace, I don't like working with other women. I think they can be catty and bitchy. Yeah, pick me's. Pick me girls. 100%. Just pearly thing girls. 100%. That's a thing. That's 100% a thing. It's like a black guy telling you it's okay to vote for Trump. It's like, wait, hold up. What the fuck, dude? Even though obviously not all black guys think the same way. But you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes certain people have a little bit more leeway on certain things that they can do compared to other people. Women can talk about women problems way more. Dude, I know for a fact that if a woman talked to a woman about vagina more objectively, they would be fine with it. But if I or like a man talked about that same thing to another woman, it'd be a little bit uncomfortable because it's like, I'm a man, obviously. It'd be like me walking into the woman's bathroom with my dick hanging out. It's going to be a little bit weird, right? Not the same way if a girl walked in with her vagina hanging out. It has a lot more social power behind that statement because it's like people think, well, why would she criticize her own gender? She's part of that community. There must be some truth to it. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why I don't like when people talk about things from authority or they think that somehow they can talk on things a little bit more so because – they have they think they have more credence to that particular thing and i also don't like it when people say like oh yeah because these people don't even necessarily even believe that right because i'll, I'll give you an example when these people say like we need more fat people we need more fat people talking about these particular types of things that's not true what they actually want is fat people that believe the ideologies that they believe talking about what they want to talk about because not all fat people are going to say the same shit and just like the same way that all women are going to say the same shit and so on and so on and so on so I see what she's saying, but this is one of the reasons, like, you guys have put yourself in this bracket. You say, believe fat people. And people here, okay, believe fat people. But then, fat people stop, fat people talk, and then you don't like it. So, that's the problem. You've literally built the box that you've put yourself in. Where in actuality, it's just that she's an asshole. <laughs> you know? Yeah, de definitely, bro. 100%. If a fat person tells you that it's not good to be fat... They're not speaking truth. They're not coming at you with their own opinion. They're not telling you what they know to be true, even if they might be well-researched. No, 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 no. They're just an asshole. Obviously. It's that easy. It's that easy, right? Even though this person is literally doing the exact thing that that other person is doing, just in the opposite direction. So wouldn't that also mean that you're an asshole? Just because it's just because she's an asshole. It's the same happening with these I am fat butt comments I get. They're trying to t show anyone who is reading. I am fat and therefore I have some fucking value in the, what I'm about to say. Yeah. Where in actuality, they don't. Why not, dude? They, they should. Out of all the people that would have an opinion on something, it would be the people that have the exact condition within question. That only makes sense, right? That only makes sense. And it makes more sense than mostly other, mostly all other things. And I'll, I'll give you a good example, right? I hate it when people lump black people together because not all black people are going to go through the same thing. You might find a community of black people that might be going through roughly the same stuff, but not all black people are going to go through the same thing. Like, for instance, a dude from the Bronx that's black and grew up in the projects or whatever, compared to, like, some dude over there in, I don't know, South Africa, growing up in a hut village or something like that. These are two very different black dudes, right? But when it comes to being fat, especially for somebody at this particular body size, you guys 100% are dealing with the same problems by different various, by by different like sensitivities, right? She might be not experiencing joint pains and things such and so forth, but she probably is. She's just not recognizing it in comparison to like a person that's also that same weight that probably feels it a little bit more because they maybe had that weight on for a little bit longer. And that makes any sense. So I don't agree with the idea that this person is just an asshole because they're talking about their opinion. I think what it actually is, is you don't like what they're saying because there's truth behind it. And you know that if you did listen to it, you would have to take that into account. And that would actually demonize how you live your life. That's what I'm actually hearing here. And I guess as well on that, whatever they do say is actually what the majority of people think because we live in a fat phobic society. That's, you know, it's too easy. It's too easy to just say that. It's too easy to be like, oh, we live in a fat phobic society. Therefore, everything they say is devalued because it's the general thought. By the way, um, sometimes the general thought is the right thought. You know that? Like, sometimes the most obvious answer is the right answer. Like, what I'm actually hearing from you is two plus two equals four, but I think it's five. And because you think it's four then you're fat phobic and I don't like that, so I'm gonna devalue everything you're saying. That's basically what I'm hearing. The majority of people believe that fatness is unhealthy, that fatness means that you deserve uh, you deserve the ridicule and the bullying that you get from being- It's not about deserve, it's just what happens. Like, 
It's like being a woman and then having copious amounts of dudes hounding you for, for a vagina. Like, it's not that you deserve it. It's just that it just happens because this is the circumstances that you're in. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing or that it should or should not be happening. But you can't expect things to not happen if you're in a particular category, right? Like, I wouldn't expect to not get rug burn on my meat sack because my shit is like crazy ungodly levels of massive. The point I'm making is sometimes you fit into categories and you're going to have to suffer the complications or the consequences of that regardless of whether or not you wanted to or didn't want to be within that particular type of group. So if you're fat, and you're dealing with quote-unquote fat phobia, which is realistically walking upstairs, and I guess somebody's saying that you're big-backed, then it is what it is. Like, that's a complication of you being fat. It's a, it's just gonna, it's just what it is. Fat phobic society. And the fat person who's leaving that comment also believes that. This woman is, like, really terrible to listen to. Like, am I wrong in saying that? This woman is actually agonizing to listen to. There's an extra level of sadness there, though, because, I mean, obviously, they're they are perpetuating the abuse that they are also going to be subject sub subject to. You're also working under the assumption that these fat people are dealing with the same type of fat phobia that you're talking about. When in reality, most of these fat people might have internalized those thoughts and thought, hmm, maybe this is not fat phobia. Maybe stairs are not fat phobic. Maybe what this actually is is my cue to get into get into a healthy body fat percentage, right? Because the way these th the way these people think about it is like almost everything is fat phobic. So like for instance, not being able to take a shower because you can't fit in the tub, or not being able to properly execute a bowel movement because your butt cheeks are too big, or having to buy two plane tickets. A lot of people would deduce that this is not a problem with society. It's not a problem with buildings. It's not a problem with airplanes. It's a problem with you. So when you say like, oh, they're going to be experiencing the same traumas, sure, but they're not looking at them in the same way that you're looking at them. If that makes any sense which is super sad and i don't know if they realize that but this woman has like no ability to actually think like i, I i'm sorry to say that dude that th i think this woman actually is a little dumb but yeah but it pisses me off no way when i read that comic so i'm like you you that's just such an asshole thing to say like it's not an asshole well it could be an asshole thing to say but it's an asshole thing to say in the same breath as you saying the same asshole thing to say in the opposite direction because you're literally doing exactly what that person does but in a different direction you literally have videos dedicated to i'm fat so i live in a fat phobic society people treat me this way because i'm fat you literally did it in this video so I don't know how you can be upset with somebody saying something about you in this particular, not even about you necessarily. You're just saying being fat is not good and you have a problem with that, but you could say the same thing, but from the opposite direction is fine. I am not above criticism. People will criticize me all day, every day. And the thing is that comment would still be a criticism regardless of not whether it has the I am fat at the beginning, but they add that in to give themselves, first of all, a pat on the back to be like, I'm not like one of those fatties. I'm a good fatty. I believe what the good guys think, right? The cool kids think, right? You they think that, yeah, what I'm hearing here is that she thinks that she's like counterculture. She thinks that like she's so cool because she believes something that's not, like she believes something that's not what everybody believes, which there could be value in there. Sure, maybe you know something that other people don't know and that maybe makes you think that you're better or cooler or something like that. Sure, but some there's a reason why a lot of people believe that the sky is blue. There's a reason why people believe that when you breathe air, it feels good and maybe you don't think that, but that doesn't mean that it's wrong. That doesn't mean that if somebody thinks that it being fat is a wrong thing, that they're wrong. That just means that they're believing what mostly everybody believes anyway. That's kind of how society moves forward. It's like we have a new development people research that and then people adopt it and they use it and then that just becomes the norm so i mean you could think you're cool because you don't believe it but the reality of the situation is not on your side they want a bit of a pat on the back for that first of all but then they also want to convey some kind of authority that they have some kind of authoritative voice on the matter just because they could be misconstrued as being part of the group yeah, you're doing it too. You're literally, you do it too. Bring it back to my like women in the workplace example. Uh, not all women are feminists. Uh, some women are misogynists in the same way that not all fat people are fat yep. liberationists or body positive people. And some of them are fat phobic. It's the same logic. Sure. <sighs> Fucking sad. And it, may, it, it makes my blood boil. <laughs> I just really want to talk to these people because most of the shit they say has absolutely no value and it doesn't make any sense. And they are literally doing the exact thing that they say that they don't want people doing and they don't see it for some reason. And it like, if this is boiling your blood, what you should do is like, 
take the transcript of this video. I'm sure somebody can like transcribe it for you and say everything that you just said in this video, but look in the mirror when you do it. Not you watching the video, but Queen Best says 100%. That's what you should do because everything that you're saying in this video can equally be placed right back upon you. And it would be even more because you're literally making videos on the internet bragging about this shit. So you you can't even talk about this shit if you believe it. Anyway. <laughs> Makes my blood boil. That's not the only bad. Let me tell you something about that blood boiling, bro. You got to chill back on all those diabetes, bro. Because like, that's what's really going to make your blood boil, bro. All those high calorie, high fructose corn syrup meals. Let me share an experience that I have had that me I, posting a video about me i have done that i have acted on and these are my emotions to the experience that i have had and let me comment on how this is only applicable to you and this in no way happens to other people this says more about you than you realize this is about you yes i know that's why i said i that's why I said it's my experience, my emotion. Sure, I mean, you, like, dude, if you, have you never been on the internet? Like, it's, it could be funny as, like, a gag, but you just made, we just watched your video, like, right now, and you were speaking from a very general standpoint in sense of, like, oh, these people will say this, and these people will say that, and this makes my blood boil, and they're trying to say this from this perspective, and I would never do this or whatever. Dude, you do it, so don't act like you don't do it, too. You're complaining about the very thing that you do. Emotions, my reactions, my story. It is about me, so yes, it will tell you about about me. Got to put some chapstick on a little bit, dude. Damn, crusty. That's the point. And actually, it's only applicable to your experience. Yes, you are accurate in that statement. So accurate to the point where it doesn't even need to be said. That's real interesting, dude. That's real interesting how you can say it's so accurate, doesn't need to be said, and then make literally a five minute video dedicated to the fact that people are mean to you on the internet because they say things you don't dis you they say things that you disagree with while saying things that other people disagree with. Interesting. Really interesting. Because that's the point. I feel like this woman's missed the point, missed the plot, missed everything, to be honest, dude. This woman is talking out of her ass, and none of it makes any sense. But she's going to get married soon, so good job on that one, dude. Creating families, that's awesome. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. So if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, a comment, a subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I would appreciate tremendously. So if you could do any stuff for me, I would appreciate you tremendously. I want to thank everybody that's a member because you guys are amazing and fantastic and you smell awesome today. I want to thank everybody that is also subscribed. Thank you so much. You're beautiful and amazing. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in ink because I have a pen and this is a really good pen, dude. I was writing with it today. I don't usually write anymore i don't think many people do actually write it's it's like crazy that you see people actually whipping out pens nowadays but i guess it's better than seeing somebody whip out dick right so uh yeah write ink down below and then i'll know how much of a imbu imbued amazing spectacular awesome person you are i swear you're so amazing, matter of fact, that I think that we need, like, murals, like, wall art of you. Just your face. And then perhaps maybe the aura that you present as well. Because the beauty that you emanate off of your frame on a daily basis cannot be uh, ignored. I mean, you are obviously one of the most specialized specimens across the entire spectrum, of course. And I think that probably, like, a tapestry or something like that of your face um, would be a good reflection of our, our society at large. So we can do that. That would be amazing. My life would be improved. I Probably your life would be improved. But to be honest, I don't really care about that. I just really care about what I'm getting out of it, which is I get to look at you every single day. And obviously, you're an amazing person. So it's a win-win regardless. But anyway, guys, if you want to check out my social media, that's the end of the video. We You can go ahead and do that by looking in the description of this video and the description of my channel. And you can go ahead and follow me on any of the platforms listed there. Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all those platforms. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.